Hi, this is a Marconi uh, Model 730 Marine Communications Receiver. Apparently made in the early 1930s. It would have lived in the communications room of a ship, probably a naval ship. Um, it's originally battery powered accumulators, which would have been charged by the ship's generators. And this particular radio is capable of, re of receiving signals from well, ship to ship communications and ship to submarine, and also receiving the five kilohertz timing sig signal that used to be transmitted from rugby. Um, you can see these pull out. I thought myself that the I've never seen anything like like this before. Not a radio like this or this of this design. So I, I kind of thought these were valves to start with. I thought, why on earth does it need all these valves? But these are actually radio frequency coils. And this is how you change wave bands. Instead of having a a selector switch on the front like these sorts of these sorts of things, you actually put the right pair of radio frequency coils in each of these sockets and there's the wave band that you're using. Um, I forget exactly what the wave band is but it's all the way down to um, submarine frequencies, ultra low, f U ULF, ultra low frequency. Don't know what the top end is but the manual that comes with it states all of that. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of coils, seven wave bands there. These must be all the more commonly used ones. And then inside, these little catches at the side, if you flip up the front, there's more inside. There's another three pairs here, so these must be perhaps less commonly used ones. It's all wooden construction. There's no uh, radio frequency shielding in this thing particularly, except perhaps on the main circuit board. Go on, get back in there. I can't get it in there now. There we go. Um, it's nice the way it all flips open for servicing. Just have a quick look at the front first. I kind of barely know what all of this stuff means. There's the rod and on off switch, it's on off. It's off there, then switch it to tune, uh, standby, and crystal, which means if you had a crystal in these sockets here, you could use it without power as a crystal receiver in the event of an emergency when there's no power. Um, I said already that's where your in use set of waveband coils goes. Low frequency oscillator switch. Somebody who knows more about the operation radio would know about that. The switch itself seems to function, it's just missing the toggle off the front. Um, this is the reaction. <laughs> this is a TRF radio. I've kind of um, Googled what Wikipedia's got to say about TRF, TRF radios. They're a bit more picky to tune into frequencies and superheads. Um, you may know more about that than I do. Um, what does that say? Detection. Is that wave band detection? It's all nice how there's these microscopic and macroscopic ways of turning the tuning coil or the tuning capacitor inside. All the, it all seems to function even the little rubber wheel band thing around the edge there seems to be still intact. So it's turning that tuning capacitor as it should be. Similarly on the other side is another function that seems to work nicely. Fine tuning. What is this one? High frequency. Oh no, high frequency coil. Detector coil. So what are these things? 
Doesn't uh, doesn't say, but I guess those are for tuning it in. Something similar over here connected to another um, capacitor on the other side. High frequency gain detector gain that must be linked to these things. And another on-off switch, main power maybe. Um, these are where your headphones would be. I don't think speaker out, but it's just headphones. Although you could quite happily hook it up to a modern amplifier or even some Bluetooth thing if you wanted to. Even a set of computer speakers might be modded into there. Right, let's have a look inside. Oh, I love the look of all this vintage thermionic valve technology. I used to play about with this sort of thing when I was a kid. That smell of hot beaker light. Seems to be another coil here, which I think is possibly there permanently. I can't remember why it does mention it in the instructions. Four valves, all of the same type, all intact. Um, this one I think is to do with the reception of the 5 kilohertz rugby signal. I think it's all the original components, there doesn't seem to be any modern ones on there. It's all these big electrolytic capacitors that may well need changing. There's a bit of crystally stuff on the end of that one. Um, that's what they call a magic eye. Some kind of power indicator. Great big tuning capacitors. I just I remember all this stuff when I was a teenager. Instead of sitting there playing computer games like my friends were, I was fiddling about with electronics of all sorts of different kinds. That's some other type of tuning coil in there, maybe. All sorts of... There's another tuning capacitor down there. All these wafer type selector switches. All the mechanisms still seem to work nicely down there. Mm. And there's the that switch. Mm. Something's been done here, maybe a bit of a repair because there's some bare copper wire here where they haven't soldered it on completely. Sure, are they big capacitors or something? Another tunable coil in there, inductor. Let's have a quick look underneath. There's some. The only modern wiring that I've seen on this thing is is here. When I first saw it in the auction, I got it from. I wondered if it had been converted to run off mains power, and these were speaker outputs, but. Uh, I don't think that's actually the case because the these are all original wires you can see all the resin <laughs> it's like the stuff they used to do stamps seals with on old envelopes I've forgotten the name of it now I think these are where the original power inputs would have been and there must be an aerial I think this one here is where the aerial comes in Transformer there. There's no no sign of that on the other side. Uh, can't be a power input transformer because there's no mains going to it, so it must be the output from the valves. Maybe go into the headphones or something. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Here's all the dry lytic, original dry lytic. An electrolytic capacitor here. It's, it's got the, it's got polarity on it. There's another type of capacitor there. Another electrolytic. All these old, these are old style resistors. There's a little transformer inductor there. 
and that's where all these cables come from that little transformer is looking at that that made me think well no it can't have been converted to mains power because that just isn't big enough that's just some form of inductor I think um, a whole panel of resistors there amazing all this solder tab style wiring ad hoc almost I'd love to get it going myself if I could but I kind of need the money more than I need to spend time playing with it unfortunately yeah. certainly some capacitors are changing there but like this is sort of basic stuff for any old radio restoration project that's the first thing you do is replace the is it paper capacitors or mylar film or whatever they're called and all the electrolytics and any dodgy looking resistors you find something's already been done there looks like an original repair there and nothing too recent okay hope that was of interest I find all this stuff quite fascinating watching